Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to the video. I am going to be inking the the face and the gun in this video. This is sped up. It's about at 50% faster than um, the original speed. I'm just, there was, I recorded audio while I was recording it, but it, it just got a little patchy. And so I was like, this will be way better. And I can hit all the the topics that I discussed. So, you know, I've, I've had some really good questions and comments in the video. And uh, look, you have to understand, this might seem like this is taking a long time to ink. I'm only two hours and 30 minutes into the inks. So right now, the piece all total has taken maybe seven and a half hours. That's not that long for like a cover splash page type image. Um, you know, I would say that, that a, a real nice one will average seven to 12 hours, somewhere in there, like a cover, you know, so I'm real good with time management and I've always been very, very productive. So, um, there's nothing out of the ordinary going on right now. The, the question was basically is like, do you think that the level of detail that some artists put, um, affects like the productivity or the, the, the flow you do kitty? I, I don't. I'll explain why in a second. My cat disagrees with me already. Um, but uh, look, generally speaking, I've worked around and with like a lot of really, really good artists that, that some are very detailed, some are not so detailed. Most of the time when someone's lagging on a project, it's procrastination. It's procrastination or they're stuck on some sort of drawing problem that they can't solve. I think the the idea that because someone has gotten really good at drawing that they don't get stuck on drawings or have trouble drawing stuff is kind of like a misnomer and and even the best they probably set the bar even higher for themselves in their mind and so that can work against you where like you want to do a cool shot of a character and you just can't seem to, to in your mind visualize um, a shot that you want or something like that um, and look, you know, when, when people hit something hard, what do they do? They try to find distractions, you know, it's like next year cleaning your office and you're organizing, you know, your, you know, <laughs> bookshelves, whatever, you know, it's like all of a sudden doing the dishes doesn't sound that bad when you're like trying to figure out something. So a lot of that goes on. Um, but generally speaking, I've never had the opportunity to not be working. So for me, the norm has always been, um, you know, I'm kind of like a monthly artist most of the time. I've worked with people that are a little slower, um, but even Finch and I, we did a tremendous amount of work for the the time that we were paired up. Um, you know, most of the time it was monthly work, and we did Forever Evil, which was really really complicated. I mean, you had um, a huge event with all these characters, and it was a crossover event, so you had to be on time because of. Um, the, the tie-in with other books and Batman Dark Knight when we worked on that was part of the new 52 launch stuff like that I mean it can really really kick your ass and so um, you know uh, I'm pretty capable of, of being able to handle a workload uh, I'm inking her utility belt I was I uh, generally speaking will try to find something somewhat easy to do first and uh, I'm I know I'm going into some hard stuff in fact I, I really take a pencil and redraw the whole gun before I ink it because um, I wanted to make sure that I knew exactly what I was going to do there. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not a weapons expert in terms of drawing them. I want to get better at it though because I really do want to be able to draw some pretty killer, um, like, you know, guns and laser pistols and things like that. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm trying to do stuff but, but I know I'm going to be inking the face, which is terrifying. And I know I'm going to be inking that gun, which is terrifying. Because it's like, if it looks stupid, it sticks out right in front of our face. So those two things are like going to be a, a focal point. So I'm just getting kind of warmed up since it's the first stuff that I'm inking in the morning. Um, and uh, then the, the other thing that I thought that I would talk about a little bit is, um, why did it take me so long to work on Blaster Kid? So there's there's multiple reasons, but but the main one that has always been the sticking point for me is what was I going to do with it? There wasn't crowdfunding when I first came up with this idea. The only real option I had would be to get it published somewhere. I mean, there were people that were self-publishing, but it wasn't like... Um, uh, 
you know, I, I, I really wasn't inspired to work on other people's characters. So the idea of like, well, get good enough so that you can draw, um, the flash or <laughs> it just, there was, there was no, um, there was no real, um, uh, ex- like excitement for me with that is it it's, it's my thing has always been that to create stuff and make up things and and to try to like um explore my imagination and come up with with things that I think look cool and so but yeah I mean honestly it was I was just I was stuck on a hamster wheel is how we describe it and and I've got close friends who I've been you know more honest with about like some of the frustrations and stuff that I've dealt with as as um uh, inker and it's it's like it's challenging and and if you look at like the people from my class bat joe weems those guys are they were all pros before me but but you know why aren't they on top books like you know it's it's there's there's just a few seats at that table and you have to be in a relationship with that penciler. And if you're not in a relationship with that penciler, then when your job is over, you don't always have a guarantee that that penciler is going to want to work with you again. I've explained this too, is I used to ink a cover every month. Like if I was working on a comic book, I would ink the cover, you know, it was just the way that it was all of a sudden pencilers were like, well, I'm going to ink all my own covers. And so I went from inking almost 36 covers in one year to doing, I've done eight in the last six years. So imagine how much of a huge pay cut that is for me, just in terms of page rate, I'm losing a lot of money, but then in terms of the original art, you know, and it's, it's, I'm not looking for sympathy with that, but that's just the reality of what was going on is, is it was just like every part of my job was getting compressed and smaller. And, and it was, uh, DC started seeing me as I call it the elevator, which was, Hey, we've got this new penciler. Can you elevate their pencils? And, um, I knew that that was going to be really, really bad for my career. (laughs) You don't go from inking the top people to inking a bunch of new people. It's, it's like at that point, um, you're just basically giving your career the kiss of death. (laughs) So, but I didn't have a choice. If I didn't have work, what was I going to do? Not make a living for four months or I could take a new penciler and it's nothing against the new pencilers. Everybody starts out and has to do, um, you know, their early work. But, but, uh, as someone who had clawed my way up from the bottom already, um, to go backwards that far, it really just, it put me in a really, really awkward spot and, uh, I wasn't able to get out of it. And so, I got on YouTube about four years ago and just really wanted to meet other artists. So well, let's talk about the inking really quick. Um, so this face is really, really tiny. I'm using a six zero Koenor Rapido graph. And I put the tiniest bit of water in with the ink um, so that uh, it would, it would flow and not clog the pen, but it was a mistake. I, I didn't like actually the viscosity of the ink when it was slightly um, diluted. So I wouldn't do that again, but again, that's why this piece was a little tiny bit of like an experiment, but yeah, there was no margin for error on this face. Um, once I had it drawn, cause everything is so tiny. Um, but, um, um, what I, I kind of was stressing as I was inking it was, um, you want to get it down and you want to get it locked in and you do not want to tinker with it. (laughs) I I laughed that I said tinker in the other video too. Um, but, but yeah, when, when you are working on little tiny stuff like this and you start getting fussy and you go, well, let me, let me play with the eyebrow a little bit more. Let me play with the pupil a little bit more. You're really, really risking screwing it up so when you get it looking good you just you have to let it go it's the one thing that i've learned from being super psychotic with with the um quality control that i put on myself (laughs) from my own work if it's your if your pencils then who knows no i'm just kidding but um yeah so so uh You'll, you'll see me as I, I go in, I start inking, I think the hair next, the next video. I stopped it cause it was this, this, we were getting towards the end of the video where I knew my camera was going to shut off. So I'm just 
like killing the last like three minutes and then the video is going to start over again you won't you won't notice the difference but it's going to start right now or like in a second all right so and i inked for maybe like a minute off camera so you could see i started inking her sideburns on her hair and a little bit of the bangs coming down um but uh yeah, it was going from the idea that her head was going to be almost completely in shadow and just I was going to have maybe a little strip of light hitting like her forehead coming across her eye and then a little bit of a hit on the top of her cheek. I just wasn't sold that that was going to read is what I wanted it. I think that it could have, honestly. I think with the piece done, it would have actually looked really cool. But the idea of having it so exposed and showing the pencils and stuff like that, I wasn't sure that, that in that sort of evolution of showing the piece, it was going to work. So I opted to sort of hit it up the middle. Was I always use that reference is like I just needed to get it in the middle of the fairway and then I can I can do crazy stuff once I have the important stuff done. But um, in storytelling, you can get more kind of crazy with that, too. And and, and uh, there'll be a lot of surprises along the way in the book itself. And then we can talk about that, too. So, look, the only way that I'll be able to pull this off is if the crowdfunding does well. There's just no two ways about it. There's the only way that, that I'll ever be able to draw this book is we have to do it together. It's the bottom line. I can't do it on my own. I couldn't do it on my own before. I could draw it on my own, but it wouldn't it wouldn't get out. I could, you know, print out 12 copies and take it to, like, a comic book convention. Or we can crush it. And have this book be awesome, and and uh, that's what I want. So that's why these pieces are so important to me. Why the the project is is, I want to make sure that you guys are getting like a brand new book, that one is really really cool, and you know that the artist put a lot of effort into, and two that we're this is the beginning of a road for me. I've said this a million times. Like when when I finish this Blaster Kid comic book, this is just the beginning. You know, this is like year one. I've done like two short stories that I'm that that I think looked good. The the one is in the Me the Megadeth book, um, and I, I like it. I mean, I'm proud of what I did. It, it's but you know, imagine how much better I'll be after I have a hundred pages of this stuff done. You know, that's nothing. That's the a normal comic book artist does that in a year. I've just never had the opportunity to be able to draw that much. I'm like many of you, where. You know, I work a nine to five job. It just happens to be inking comics. I've done some really cool stuff and I've done just jobs, lots of jobs. And then these little bright moments of, you know, inking David Finch or inking Chris Boccolo for a year or two. But, you know, at some point, well, and I used to say that in the Journey of a Thousand Miles videos, at some point, every job ends. If you work on Gears of War and you're a, a, a lead animator or a head concept person, at some point, the, the job is finished, and you need to now go find another job. Sometimes you get a better job. Sometimes you just need a job. You know, it depends on what you're making. I've never, you know, I was, I'd never made crazy money in comics where it was like I had, oh, you know, well, I could take six months off and sort of figure out what I'm going to do. It was like, all right, I need work because in two weeks, I'm not going to be able to do anything. <laughs> so... But that was why I worked so hard on it. And it's funny is is you, you can look at what I did with my own drawing skills, which was I just woodshedded. I, I practiced and practiced and practiced. And I drew and I drew and I drew. And I tried to learn more and learn more and learn more. And when I felt it was ready and I really was, was uh, proud enough and felt comfortable enough with what I did, then I started to go for it. And it was kind of what I did with Patreon is people kept going like, you need to start a Patreon. Like, like. You've done a lot of YouTube videos like like I would love to have you on Patreon. And I waited until I had 200 videos on YouTube before I did it. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe that's my personality is I feel like I have to earn it. So I wanted to earn everyone's trust with this stuff. So that's why that's why I did it the way that I did it. It probably doesn't make sense to most people, but maybe it does. Maybe me explaining it that it, it meant that much to me. And I wanted to make sure that it was as good as I could get it going into it I wouldn't be satisfied any other way and I'm looking forward to getting better there's so many things just in this one piece that I'm like oh, oh next time I'm gonna draw this better the, when I have to do that again I'm gonna I'm gonna do that better too so I'm super driven I've always been that way but uh now we're getting into the gun and you'll see in a second I decide that I 
need to start penciling it. So I'm going to switch from the, the um, Copic multi-liner to the um, pencil. Because I wanted to make sure. Or did I already do it? Maybe I did it. I wasn't paying attention. I see some pencil on it now. And then what I do here is I do that same technique where I do like just part of a circle just to get enough of a, a pretty accurate edge on it. And then the rest I can do freehand and it'll it'll look more naturalistic that way and, and a little more organic. But yeah, you can you can kind of put part of it down as a guideline. So But yeah, what's funny is is I I've had people say they go, man, you seem so much happier now. Like like, and it's funny because I never realized that I didn't sound happy. But Jackson Taylor mentioned in uh, one of my videos that he goes, even my wife notices like in your videos you seem so much more happy. It's like because I finally see an opportunity that just wasn't there before. You know how frustrating it is to want to do your own thing and just kind of going like, how is that even possible? Now it's possible. I really think that what we've got going on is it's just it's the image revolution all over again. It's just it's just a different thing, but it's it's the artists got somehow sort of pushed into the background a little bit and and people don't realize well, they do. The fans realize how important we are to this whole process and and uh, you know, are artists the best writers? No, you know, some of them are, some of them aren't. But but uh you know, no one knows how good I can write or not. So <laughs> give me a chance and we'll see what happens. I went in and I actually did an extra row of those vents on the gun. So it originally had two rows. I put a third row in. I don't know if you can really see it. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, it was really frustrating. I would get very down in the dumps about it because I would get very excited about the idea of drawing Blaster Kid or, or doing any kind of like my own creator, own comic. And then I was just like, how the fuck? Like, like the, the logistics of it, it just didn't even seem possible. You know? What am I going to sell them on DeviantArt? I mean, it was like... <laughs> and what's what's kind of disappointing too, I'll, I'll tell you guys this because it's it can it can... It'll be surprising, but, but you know, people think because, oh, well, you worked at Wildstorm, da-da-da-da-da. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I don't have that much support, not from the Wildstorm people, but just in in general. It surprises me because, like, I'll have someone, they'll, like, send me a link, and they'll go, like, oh, dude, you should check this out. And I'm like, I did a YouTube video about this, like, three days ago. So I know that a lot of people that, that sort of I thought were, like, my friends online and stuff like that, they don't even follow my shit. I, I, it's like I'm not psycho enough to go and check and see if they even like it. But, but sometimes I wonder. <laughs> it's like, do you guys just want to like hide me in the corner? Because I'm not gonna hide in the corner anymore. It, it's like, um, yeah, it's funny. It's like they don't like if you're seen as a threat. Like they, they kind of don't want you out there. And it's, it's a weird thing, but. I've always had that vibe. I don't think it's paranoia either. It's just like one of those things, but you know, you just get a sense of it. But I have a lot of friends that are great to me too. So it's, it's, it's just every once in a while you kind of go like, hello, like, are we all together in this or am I just alone? Am I alone? So it's looking good, man. And, and I would say when this video is done, we are three and a half hours into the piece. So, sorry, it's focusing on my other hand. It's, but, yeah, so my, my guesstimate on it was that it would take five to six hours to ink it. And that's about right. And like I said, this is nothing out of the ordinary for um, a piece like this. It's a cover, you know? I mean, it's basically what it's going to end up being is could use this for a lot of different stuff so i would rather spend the time on something like this than than spend eight hours on a page that no one's going to give a crap about you know what i mean like to me this is time well spent it'll get people excited about it and uh there you go look at that Woo! blaster kid is coming to life for you all all right i'll talk to you all later have a great day and uh, again, thank you all for your support. I really do appreciate it. I, I have so many amazing friends that I've made along the way. And it means a lot to me. So, all right. 
tomorrow we'll wrap up the figure and then I will go in. I'm going to pencil the background more, a little tighter, and find out my values. And then I'm going to ink that bad boy. And then you'll see the final as a surprise. All right, bye.